Well, hello there and welcome to Travels with Jordy. If this is your first visit, my name is Peter Knowles and I live on this classic wooden motor cruiser here in Victoria, British Columbia, along with the loving memory of my pup Jordy, all the while fixing it up for some pretty ambitious cruising. If that's the sort of thing that you might find interesting, please consider sticking around and subscribing. I'd love to have you. Well, this week I am back up in Genoa Bay in the shed working on poem and working on the forward bulkhead. I'm so excited about it because it's something I really didn't know how it was going to go and it went great. And it's kind of a lead in to some really fun stuff that's going to happen in the forward foxel. And welcome back to the shed. Well, you'll recognize these pieces from last week. These are the bits of the sole, including that little one there. And it's time to get some actual finish on here. I was going to do this in place, but I want to get quite a few coats on this uh, this week and it wasn't that hard to lug it back out again and this way I can varnish out here and keep working in the bilge. Well when I say varnish I actually mean varathane which is what I used on um, the sole of Jordi as well. It's a, yeah, you're all familiar with it. This is the professional oil based version which dries quickly which is of course what I'm concerned about because I'm going to do several coats on the top, the edges and the bottom. If you've been following for a while you'll know that I did not do that uh, on the sole of MV Jordi and I'll tell you why. On MV Jordi I used very very high quality marine plywood and I believe that wood, once it's encapsulated, uh, moisture that does get in, which is inevitable, has a tough time getting out. So I actually much prefer wood to be able to breathe on one side, in most cases. This is cabinet grade plywood. It's very, very good. It's nice stuff. It has lots of veneers, but nothing like the marine ply. And I don't know much about the glue, although I've used this stuff a fair amount and haven't had any trouble with it. So, I am going to varnish or varathane the bottom and edges of this plywood. Should I? Should I try it? I, it's oil based. It dries pretty good. It make it really stick. Anyway, let's let's give it just a quick try. Actually, I'm going to say it's at least as effective here as it was before. I'll have to be a little more careful around the edges, but it certainly does spread it out in a hurry. Okay, so I can tell you straight up that squeegeeing was not a good idea for fast drying varathane. It just turned into a sticky mess quite quickly. Anyway, um, got a first coat on. There's lots more to do. Let's uh, have a look inside. Holy moly. Okay, so I'm up way, way, way in the forecastle, pulling apart the chain locker. You can see nasty mold that was behind it. And uh, it. <laughs> I actually hate chain lockers and I particularly hate this one. It was put together with a million galvanized fasteners, which I can't get out. So the trick is to take a hole saw, a small, small little hole saw, um, without the uh, drill bit in the end, and then center it over the screw, and you can basically drill a hole right where the screw was, and then it's easy to put a vice grip on what's left, because the wood will just break away and twist those screws out. Oh yeah, nasty, nasty, nasty. I'm doing this work tonight because I try not to run power tools after five o'clock. Uh, but I have to be really productive in the next few days. Oh, this has pretty much done my back in. Ooh. All 
right back in the bilge. Well, <laughs> did I say I was so excited about being able to walk on a flat surface again? Well, no. While the sole panels uh, dry outside in the shop, I still get to crawl around in the bilge. Okay, so some refastening. While we've got everything open, I am going to add uh, more fasteners here between the stringers and the frames at every level. Now, yes, these were carriage bolted through when the boat was built, and there are some nails here as well, but um, these fasteners have been in here a very, very long time. So I'm going to add uh, another um, two and a half inch uh, galvanized quarter inch lag bolt at every one of these connections just to add a little more security. Um, if you were following along while I did the big haul out with Jordy um, a little while ago, um, you can see that sometimes fasteners do let go. So this is cheap insurance. Boy, you can really feel the difference between cutting through this Douglas fir and that white oak. It is much, much tougher. There we go. That feels good. Now, although it may not seem as attractive, I don't want to put um, new fasteners in the same vertical line of the frame as any old fasteners because there may already be a split in the, um, in the, in the frame and I want to give it a chance at some fresh new wood. And as well, replacing the screws in the sole beams with, with the leg bolt. Now I'm only putting one in each uh, sole beam because they're entering the uh, relatively vulnerable part of the frame and I don't want to risk um, any chance of encouraging splits at that part of the frame. Uh, and anyway, that is plenty, plenty solid for what we're doing. All right then, time to get on with this forward bulkhead. And it's not that it's complicated, but it's in a few steps. Um, the lower section, in other words, from the beam down, I'm going to use a marine ply, really top-notch marine ply, because I have a little. Uh, from here up, I'm going to use a mahogany sapelli ply because it's pretty, it's much cheaper, and I have some as well. And it's not vulnerable from here up at all. Um, so there'll basically be a triangle, well, I guess a, I don't know, arc half moon sort of looking thing that'll sit down there and against halfway up this beam. And then two pieces because there's a rather large doorway here in the um, heading to the forecastle. I'm not quite sure how large yet, so that's something I've got to think about while I'm doing this. So in the meantime, it's basically just cutting and scribing a piece of marine ply to go down in there. Okay, so here we go. This will normally go down on the forward side of this um, beam, but I'm just going to put it down on this side for now, uh, just to do a very rough initial scribe. So I'm about uh, that far too high. So I'll just hold the pencil right here and do, oh, I don't know, something like that. And over here I'll do something like that. And uh, that won't be all that close, but it'll be close enough to get me further down and I can do a better scribe. Okay, so now I'll put it down on the correct side and uh, get it relatively level and uh, we'll have a better go at this. Okay, now that I'm getting closer and I'm cutting something that's actually a curve, I'm going to raise the blade up a little bit so that I can uh, go around corners a little bit better. Right about to there. Okay. <laughs> Good enough for me. Wow. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Okay. Okay then. So that's ready to go in. Just going to clean up the edges just a bit. 
Now, I am not going to seal this in any way because this is exceptional marine ply. And uh, as I've often said, I believe it's better to let wood breathe than to risk sealing water into it. Now, this is not going right into the bottom of the bilge. It's sitting on top of the uh, keel and uh, that will leave lots of room for both ventilation and uh, water to get by if there, for any reason there was water this far forward in the boat. Okay, and back in we go. Now I'm not going to put any screws through the middle yet because I'm still not quite sure where that step is going to go. So. Fantastic. That is solid solid. I can't put any more down here um, Because I can't get at them, but that is plenty solid for what we're doing here Awesome now before I can get going on the upper bulkheads I have to carry on with a little project. I never really finished and that's finishing the Demolition or at least the removal of the original bulkhead that was here now This bulkhead was attached to this frame and all the way up as well as to this deck beam and it went on before the cabin sides went on so there's actually a little area in here that's pretty tough to get to uh, so I'm going to take my little recip saw and try to cut those fasteners and trim that out of there strangely enough the way the deck curves down out here uh, following that curve um, there's actually quite a large void in there uh, that I well anyway it just happens to exist get anything done before tools like this. I, I just don't know. Just giving this edge a bit of a cleanup because in future with a mahogany bulkhead here this will be an interface between white painted uh, deck beams and mahogany so might as well do this tidy up while it's exposed and easy to do. All right so this probably gives you a reasonable idea of what I'm sort of starting to imagine for the forecastle and why the size of the door is relatively critical. So what I'm thinking is a comfortable seat facing aft, nestled in this sort of bowl of a, of a forecastle, perhaps even wide enough to be a small little love seat. Um, little plates curl up, watch a movie, because what this will also be is a little nav station, a little work area. Big monitor here on an arm that can come around. This side will be a little desk with the electrical panel. Little desk for working here, like an armrest type desk thing on the side here. I like it. And uh, so it's possible that if this opening is wide enough, this is still part of the same space that you guys are in. Now it is a little weird because it's, you know, it's 14 inches lower. This actually feels really nice, especially while it's fully open, but that's not practical with the two benches. So how much of an opening here is justifiable? Now these two pieces of uh, blue masking tape represent the innermost edge of the structure of the benches up here. Now it doesn't represent the extent of the lower cushion which will actually come in a little further. So I'm going to imagine quite a bit further, this is 34 inches, I'm going to come down to where these two posts are and uh, call it about 28 inches. So if I bring some tape down from here as close to vertical as I can do without uh, some sort of tool okay there and then again on this side right about there and then down about oh, I don't know there And that would be nice because it's symmetrical with the posts of the window. Anyway, let's see what that feels like down below. Certainly easy to get through. Yeah, yeah, that's.
that seems like a reasonable opening. I can see all the way to whoever's at the helm. I can see all the way to whoever might be working in the galley. I can see out both doors. I like this. I like this. And it gives me enough inside bulkhead for shelves and the storage of the aforementioned monitor and the electrical panel. I like the feel of this. And you know, it really could be a cozy little spot for two to curl up and watch a movie. I like this. I like it a lot. Do you like it? It's nice, eh? <laughs> it's not bad. Another really neat feature of having this bench here is that it's directly below this rather large forehatch. So you can look right up at the sky, the sunny sky, maybe the night sky. Very, very pleasant. Plus, super handy for getting onto the foredeck. Yes, 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 yes. In fact, you can actually do full anchor handling from standing right there because this boat is so tiny. Okay, so this wants to be about 32 wide at the top and about, oh gosh, uh, 16 at the bottom. Uh, now 32 plus 16 is 48. That would be lovely if I could just back them back out of the sheet of plywood. However, very much like the sole, uh, there's a curve to the sole and a curve to the side of the boat, so it's not going to work that way. To do this safely, I just have to cut it extra large and keep sliding it in and scribing it and scribing it, which is what I'm going to do. Okay, so here we go. I've given myself lots of extra material through here. Um, now, the only thing that's square here um, is the bottom edge, which is riding on the uh, piece of... Uh, marine ply I already put down in the bilge. So as we get closer and closer, I've got to check that this inner edge is vertical. Uh, otherwise I won't have a nice square door. All right, so let's come in as far as we can, sitting on the plywood down there and start the scribing process. I can certainly see that, I can guess this one here from about there. And I can carry on that curve. Oh, nicely done, Peter. Anyway, anywhere like that is going to be good. Now, I'm running into these stringers, so i got to make a notch there. And here. Likewise here. And I can see I put much too much bulb in the middle here. There we go. These are going to have to be jigsawed. Starts to slide into there. This is good. Okay. I'm not going to say that was quick. It's been a little while, uh, but it fits and I'm happy with it. It's fine. Now, here's the really exciting part. I wonder if there's any chance it can be used for a template for the other side. Shall we have a look? Okay, so right off the bat, it's too tall. Uh huh. Interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> this boat is not really the same size left and right. I think I might have touched on that at the very end of last week's episode. Anyway, no problem. I can still use it for a template, I just can't use it as an exact template. All right. Okay, I'm just getting geared up to do the port side. And so I cut the mirror image out of this and uh, it came out of the same sheet easily with lots left over. The only problem is because it was flipped the other way, it's the back side. And I didn't realize that this particular sheet of half inch uh, Sapelli plywood is not Sapelli on the back side. All right, well, there we go. I've just measured between them. They're perfectly square. Everything is lined up. Yes! It wasn't the most beautiful scribing ever, but it won't matter at all. Let's see what it feels like to be in the forecastle. I love it. I love this big opening. It's fantastic. <laughs> okay. Let's 
going to give these a little bit of prep and oil, both sides and edges. Might as well oil them out here, which gives me the advantage of being able to do my squeegee technique. Now this is the reject side of the sheet, and which is a terrible disappointment because this is supposed to be um, sapelli both sides. So I'm going to try and get it nice enough that it won't look too bad in the uh, in the photo. I can always veneer another uh, layer over, but the whole point to using the sapelli plywood was to save two steps. I'm just going to give the front face a slight sanding, but with much finer sandpaper. Okay, let's get going. A little dollop of oil there, which I'm going to use to do the edges first. Another little dollop up here. All right, and some squeegeeing. Okay, I'm going to use that little puddle to start my rub down cloth. I want to send out a heartfelt thank you to all the folks who subscribed over the last couple of weeks uh, to support me on my social media experiment. Uh, wondering if a bit of a surge in subscriptions might do something for the YouTube algorithm. And although the several hundred subscriptions that did come in, thank you ever so much, um, may have made a tiny little glitch views are up a bit, but that really just could have been attributed to something else. Anyway, I think the experiment is done. Thank you all ever so much. And now you can return to subscribing at your regular rate, which I hope is a lot, but anyway. Thanks again. Well, hello and welcome to the Travels with Jordi Beer of the Week. Coming to you this week from MV Jordi in beautiful Victoria. You can see I'm in the middle of yet more wiring. Not to worry, there won't be yet another wiring MV Jordi episode. Let's go right to the beer. This week, a non-alcoholic. Um, because many, many more uh, non-alcoholic beers are becoming available, I want to try more and more of them. Uh, because, of course, that's very convenient. This company is actually called non-alcoholic beer company it's from montreal here in canada and it's an ipa a smooth ipa craft beer all right it would be awesome if this was awesome i'm sure it'll be just fine pours like a beer i haven't actually had that many um non-alcoholic beers that i like at all so i'm really have high hopes for this and we're going to be doing a few more of these over the next little bit all right well, what another week it's been. It's been fantastic uh, up in Genoa in the shed and so glad to have that bulkhead done and really excited about what's coming next. All right, an IPA, not alcoholic. Smells like an IPA. Honestly, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. It's hobby somehow. I don't know how they did that. It's not obviously an exact replica of an IPA, but that's very drinkable. And uh, wow, that is by far the best non-alcoholic beer I've ever had. All right, love it. Okay, let's jump straight to uh, the paperwork. Um, last week's winner of a Travels of Jordy t-shirt is Thomas La Russa. So Thomas, get a hold of me. Cheers. 
good opportunity to have another sip of this. Uh, cheers to you and congratulations on winning that shirt. That's impressive. Um, off PayPal, um, very generous. Uh, Jasper Nielsen, uh, as well as The One More and Demetrius Karamanis. Thank you all ever so much for your support through PayPal. I really appreciate it. Off the Amazon wish list. I'm gonna buy more of that. Um, three more treats have arrived. This is a <laughs> coolant recovery tank, and it is a sweetheart. Look at the way it's made. All welded aluminum, really, really quite nice. I realized that this was made on the other side of the planet. Possibly, that's all I'll say about that. But it's a very nice item, and it will be the coolant recovery tank for the Beta Marine engine in this boat. Um, it didn't come with one, and uh, it's been pointed out to me that it's possible that um, it might blow off a little coolant now and then, and it'd be nice if it could recover it. So very, very excited about that. That came without any indication who sent it, and if it was you, I would love to thank you properly, so please let me know. Also, yet another one of these fabulous little dimmers. These are potted, in other words, they're sealed, um, so humidity isn't a problem. I've already received a few of them, and I'm so grateful because in the middle of all the wiring I'm doing now, it's time to start putting these into use. Um, these are lovely little DC light dimmers. Um, that have a click off and action on them is just so nice. Anyway, I, I, I just love them. I'll put a link down below. In fact, I'll put links down below to all these things if this is something you're looking for. And finally, uh, from Patrick Horta. Very generous, always Patrick is always so generous. Thank you so much. Um, these little terminal strips. Now these are an unusual type of terminal strip. You often see them white and you often see them very, very cheap. It's a terminal strip where you can simply stick the wire in and then tighten the screw down on it. Now they're often very, very cheaply made and not something I would want to use. Um, but I've always wanted to find quality ones and these ones are really nice. If you can look in there, I don't know if you can see, that's actually a little, a uh, solid brass block um, with nice real brass screws that go into it. And I'm gonna use the pair of these actually in some rewiring I'm doing on my Land Rover. And I think it's gonna be perfectly appropriate for that. I'm actually gonna fill these um, uh, little screw terminal blocks with uh, silicone grease first, to dial it to grease, put the wire in and clamp them down. Um, it's a type of wiring that in the past I would have been hesitant to use because I would rather put a full terminal on a wire and put it on a regular terminal strip and everything. But this is no less exposed to the environment uh, than that is, and unless you cake the whole thing or pot it somehow. So uh, having found really good ones, and to be fair, they're not cheap, so thank you very much, uh, Patrick. Uh, I've gone on about these a bit too long, but I really like them. Anyway, and if you're looking for excellent terminal strips of this type, I'll also put them uh, in a link down below. Uh, thanks ever so much for all those kind gifts. Cheers. I hope I mentioned that the dimmer also came without any indication of who sent it, so please, if it was you, let me know. Um, we're simply ready for the word of the week. And the word of the week this week will be scribe. Did you see that coming? Scribe, well, it's an interesting word. You can use it in lots of ways. I've probably said it a thousand times in this episode, but there's other ways to use it as well. So if you'd like to win a Travels Geordie t-shirt, simply use the word scribe in a comment down below, and I'll pick at random over the next week's worth of comments. And if I pick you, you'll have won a Travels with Geordie t-shirt. See you next week, all you scribes. Not happy.